Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one for you this morning. You know, there's two sweet sounds that I could think of in the world. One is the sound of XRP price going to the moon. The other one is the sound of a Bitcoin maxi apologizing to XRP holders that he was wrong. And we're going to hear that today, amongst many other things. Let's roll that beautiful intro. You're going to like this one. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow me on Twitter at BackupBradleyAbove at the top of the screen and everything that we're talking about here today. And we do have a good one for you today. Bitcoin coming in at $58,445.70. And looking now right now, Ethereum is over $2,000. And XRP in the number four spot sitting at $0.99. It had been above a dollar all morning. Let's see if we can wrap this up right here. Okay, and it will get a little loud because I know that there is actually... The garbage man is rolling through our neighborhood right now as we speak. Let me shut this window because God bless them. They're hard working and we all need love them for coming. But let me get that window shut so we can keep going. All right. So here we are back at it again. So now XRP at the number four spot, courtesy of the dereliction of duty. We're still up 68.19%. There are a lot of calls from technical analysts, experts out here that are really hitting us with the alignment that XRP is approaching the position to reach a new all-time high, which would be above 384 from back in 2017-2018 bull run. That is extremely exciting. We will continue to pay attention to the ranging right now, ranging between $0.94 cents and $1.06. Cents. We will keep an eye on that, but let's go ahead and get started with some of the news this morning. A reminder about how we covered that Bitcoin transaction burns the equivalent of 70 gallons of gas, 260 liters of gasoline and will soon consume more than 181 countries worth of energy. That is from independent.co.uk. Now that is a reminder of how much energy proof of work consumes. So that is something that has always been at the forefront. And then just yesterday or two days ago, Peter Thiel came out, uh, fa- founder of uh, PayPal, and now at Palantir. And Palantir, by the way, is a company that is tied into massive government agencies, including mil- the branches of the military in the U.S. So really, Peter Thiel suggests that Bitcoin may be a Chinese financial weapon against the United States. And let me throw this one out to you right now. Uh, And we'll see if it happens or not. But in one of our many mastermind conversations with Big Skinny, he proposed to me and he says to me, and I want to go on record that he brought it up. What say you and anybody out here holding Bitcoin, for which I am one holding some Bitcoin, What would you say if during all of this with the SEC lawsuit and all of this narrative that Bitcoin could be used as a financial weapon by China, like from the likes of Peter Thiel, what say you if Bitcoin were to have a 51% attack? What would happen then? Would you see the investment funds continue to build out their position with offering Bitcoin? Or putting it on their corporate books and their balance sheet? I think you know the answer. But that is a good question. Now here, I have to give a nod to BitBoy Crypto. BitBoy Crypto is a massive crypto YouTuber. And shout out to him. And he's obviously a Bitcoin maxi. And he has a great show. And I tell you, I just want to celebrate this gentleman because of his humility here. He's not afraid to admit when he's wrong. And he's getting ready to do it about XRP. Let's listen. And he makes some really great points here. You're going to want to stay with him on this. Watch. So first, let's start with my apology to the XRP community. I'm sorry, you were right, I was wrong. So let's go back to last week on my live stream. We started discussing this article, XRP gearing up for massive pump, says credible crypto, here's how high it could go. I cover this content because I know the XRP army is a bunch of suckers for a good ripple pump story. The charts were extremely bullish and I gotta give credible crypto some credit for this. But on the live stream, I called him delusional. 
I couldn't have possibly predicted fundamentally we would see the huge price pump we just did. Because BitBoy was wrong, and that's not the only thing he was wrong about. And I just want to celebrate the guy's humility that he's actually making a video about it. You know what? I've had to do it on my channel when I've been wrong, but let's keep listening, and I'll do it about Bitcoin if I'm wrong about that. And I'm always intrigued when charts start saying things from a technical perspective that have virtually no weight to them from a fundamental perspective. Fundamentally, XRP is dead. Well, dead may be a little strong. Let's just say it's hooked up to the breathing machine and the SEC is weighing out whether or not to take it off life support. Let, let's be fair because we're all XRP holders and I know you hearing this right now going, XRP's not dead. Of course, let's give him a little bit of room here, a little wiggle room. He is apologizing. He doesn't quite understand all the details of XRP. It's far from dead. 90 some percent of the customer bases that's using XRP for settlement are outside of the United States. He's obviously not aware of that, but it's still a nice apology and he makes some really great points. Let's keep listening. I know it's a morbid comparison, but it's kind of accurate. Here's why. The SEC, the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, literally has the power of life and death in their hands for Ripple Labs. If, and it's a big if, Ripple decides to pursue an actual acquittal in the case and is unsuccessful, the SEC could give XRP the death penalty. This means that no one in the United States would ever be able to trade it again. It means no Coinbase relisting. Seeing how it's an American company ran by Americans, the SEC could go ahead and decimate Ripple Labs as well. CEO Brad Garlinghouse and former CEO Chris Larson are both in big trouble for making money based on the supposedly illegal XRP token sale. Actually, there's probably a better case to be made that they would throw out the personal lawsuits against Brad and Chris, and there is no fraud there, and there's no illegal charges being pursued. It was really just trumped up charges, to be perfectly honest, is what we're finding out. Okay, let's keep going here. But there's one person that was specifically not named in the SEC lawsuit, who's one of Ripple's co-founders, Jed McCaleb. Who's now, here's where it's about to get interesting, because all of this stuff is spot on so shout out to bitboy for this and listen to what he's saying because there's some real coincidences about jed's payout of xrp that is aligning with the sec case listen very carefully to the points he makes here and shout out to bitboy for making them he's also the founder of stellar who is also the creator of mount gox 2012 and 2013 it was the largest bitcoin exchange in the world in 2013, McCaleb sold Mt. Gox to French billionaire Marc Carpelles. Well, he wasn't a billionaire until after he took it over, but I digress. Marc Carpelles, now worth $2 billion, was in charge of Mt. Gox when it got hacked and investors lost $460 million worth of BTC at the time, worth billions now. That's what you get for trusting a site that started out as a Magic the Gathering website. True story. I actually lost some Bitcoin myself on the Mt. Gox hack, but that's another story for another day. Fact is, Jed McCaleb has been involved with some of the sketchiest stuff in crypto. But here's where we get to something quite interesting. Here's the XRP lawsuit documentation from the SEC, and you'll see a key line here. The complaint alleges that Ripple raised funds beginning in 2013 through the sale of digital assets known as XRP in an unregistered securities offering to investors in the US and worldwide. Okay, so Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson are specifically named in the lawsuit, and yet, Jed McCaleb, one of the founders of Ripple, who was there during the beginning of the fundraise for the XRP token, was not named. McCaleb left in 2014 with a hefty severance package, which included 20 billion XRP tokens. According to today's number, that would be $20 billion. But McCaleb has steadily been dumping XRP tokens every month for the last seven years. It's one of these stories that seems to raise its ugly head every single month for the XRP army a never-ending FUD campaign of McCaleb dumping the price. But here's where things take quite a conspiratorial twist. This is the vesting schedule for McCaleb's severance package. It was a seven-year schedule ending, guess when? This year. The same year the SEC is going after XRP. During 2015, 16, and 17, McCaleb could dump $20,000 worth per week. Then the number converts from USD to XRP. You can sell 750 million XRP per year during 2018 and 19. 
During 2020, he can sell 1 billion XRP. Now, in 2021, he can sell 2 billion XRP. So, one has to wonder, how much XRP does Jeb have left? A recent article from AMB Crypto says that McCaleb has 2 billion XRP remaining that he can sell all off by May. Keep in mind, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson are accused of making $600 million off of the token sale. In 2021 alone, McCaleb is going to make $2 billion. And he isn't named in the lawsuit at all. Almost like he has a get out of jail free card, also known in some circles as immunity. Damn, BitBoy's on fire right there, okay? But then he gets into the case a little bit, and it kind of gets a little skewed because he says if the SEC wants to kill Ripple, they can. And the truth is that isn't accurate. I mean, he could, they could force them by a, you know, a decision from the courts to certainly, you know, there could be a decision that forced uh, Ripple to re relocate somewhere. I mean, in worst case scenario. But as the as the case continues to unfold, it looks less and less likely that that will even be a situation. Now, let me just jump forward very quickly to the eight minute mark because he says something very clear here, and I want you to hear it. And we should all hear it. Here it is right here. But where does XRP go from here after topping $1? This is what it all boils down to. If Ripple Labs settles with the SEC, XRP will rip. And there it is. And he's right. And if XRP and Ripple do settle, and that is a case where I believe we are strongly leaning into that possibility because the truth is, is what the truth is. And what is the truth? The truth is, is that there's no way on God's green earth that the SEC can defend the video that Digital Asset Investor and I have been retweeting forever on Twitter of Vitalik Buterin explaining how they are doing an initial coin offering by accepting Bitcoin for Ethereum. That, in fact, is the definition of an initial coin offering, which makes Ethereum an unregistered security for which Bitcoin and Ethereum have been declared by SEC that they have not made an official ruling on those two assets. There was unofficial talk that had been said that William Hinman and or Jay Clayton didn't see an issue with them, but it was never an official ruling from the SEC which is why I'm encouraging people to go on Twitter and to retweet Digital Asset Investors tweet that I've retweeted as well, encouraging and tagging the SEC and Stuart Alderati and Brad Garlinghouse and Ripple to absolutely delist Bitcoin and Ethereum. Because if you're going to not have an official ruling for them, as you do not have for XRP, then why aren't they pulled off the exchanges as well? Well, and I think we all know the answer to that is because XRP should have never been pulled either. Now, looking at this, Peter Brandt, who does not hold XRP. Guys, if you have not seen my video from this morning, it is straight fire. Go check it out. There are many technical analyst experts out here uh, that are covering this stuff very closely, and they're all coming into alignment, whether it's the cup and handle or seeing different formations or using different tools like the Fibonacci or using uh, different tools out here like, uh, what is it, uh, Haishinaki or uh, whatever, I can't even say it, but uh, <laughs> using that or other tools that are out here like the uh, Elliott Wave, uh, and they're all aligning now and they're all calling for at the very minimum the new all-time high for xrp which would be above 384 right so that is really really exciting and all of this stuff is in the near term so i don't worry about the fact that xrp could possibly be taking a breath in the market right now so again cup and handle forming here from another person xrp 2020 and then here was an article i covered much more in detail and with many many other technical analysts and their opinion about where things are going and there is a call for a five dollar xrp shortly and then in the near term looking around later in the year sometime for one hundred dollar xrp don't believe it that's what they're saying so we will keep a very very close eye on that as well and here's one thing i do intend to do and none of what we're talking about is financial advice ever OK, but this is extremely interesting to me. And Kava has been doing this from day one. And they are already in total earnings distributed over thirty eight million dollars. High yield earning 
This is APY we're talking about here. That's right, annual percentage yield, which is compound. Right now, Bitcoin getting 53% plus. Binance USD, 55. XRP, 38.98. BNB, 16. Kava token itself, 25 plus. And hard token, 67% plus. Now, I tell you, I can't explain it to you, but I can tell you this, in not too distant future, I am going to take a little bit of some coins, whether it be XRP or something else, and I'm going to put it in this platform and lock it up and use it as an experiment that we can all watch and grow and watch the same and grow together and i just think that'll be the uh one of the most best practical examples we can do right there so that's what i am intending to do all right now moving on very quickly i just want to show you that as the federal reserve continues to pilot testing of its new fed now service it also readying for the real-time payment infrastructure in other ways most recently the fed announced the availability of the fed now iso 20022 messaging standards now let's be clear for clarity here fed now is set up to do domestic inside the inside the u.s okay so it will more than likely settle dollar to dollar it doesn't need a bridge asset in between it okay now it doesn't mean it won't grow to be able to expand in the interoperability and the market infrastructure that fed now will open up to some you know more outside the domestic area of the u.s as well i'm sure that will happen long term but the thing to focus on here is the iso 20022 messaging standard which happens to be uh, a new global standard of the de facto global standard for modern payments is what iso 20022 and according to ripple's website they in fact are the first member focused on distributed ledger technology using uh, ISO 2022 on that standard body committee. So don't forget that one. So even though Fed now is domestic, the ISO 20022 is being implemented everywhere for which Ripple is absolutely a part of when it comes to incorporating ISO 2022 into the distributed ledger technology a la the ledger. All right. So now looking here, this is shifting again. Are we about to see a bunch of exchanges relist XRP? Because I think the world is picking up on it. My God, even BitBoy is picking up on it. A Bitcoin maxi himself is seeing the problems with this lawsuit and other things out here. Now, here it is right here. XRP lawsuit effect. This exchange CEO says uh, selling unregistered securities is a made up crime. And this is really Eric Voorhees, who actually got in trouble with the SEC some years ago for having a uh, dice gambling, dice betting platform using Bitcoin. And he was penalized. And that's his personal opinion. I know for a fact that there is actually unregistered securities. However, I don't feel like XRP is because, look, they're not saying XRP is a security in the court case. What they're saying is, is that the sales that Ripple has made from over the counter, OTC, those sales to the widespread adoption through pre allocation that we've caught so much trash about, which is absolutely confirmed on line 82 for anyone having a problem understanding what this SEC case is actually about. It's about the fact that Ripple did achieve getting this new money throughout the world, and they didn't focus so much on the noise of the retail investor like you and I. They got banks to use it and hold it. They've got sophisticated financial institutions like clearing houses. They've got payment providers, small medium enterprises. They started at the top, right? So this is where we're at here and where we're really at is in a place where we're seeing now everyone's understanding that it's not about whether XRP is a security. It's about whether those over-the-counter sales, which were more than likely option contracts like the one Greg Kids got with them at Ripple and just like the one that R3 had with Ripple with XRP until they went to court and had their litigation in a disclosed details of a settlement, which we do not know what they are. So, But they were option contracts. So if they, in fact, used option contracts, 
contracts to ensure that widespread adoption. The SEC says those agreements that you've made of those sales are, in fact, unregistered securities. Now, if XRP is a security, then those investment contracts are, in fact, securities. If you understand XRP to be money, like I do, then that is not a security. It's just a damn loan. And that's where I'm at on this day. And that's what's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Make sure you share with somebody, you know, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Check out all the links in the description box and the comment section. Guys, Pure VPN. It's one of the many ways that I use to hide my anonymity online. And I use it every single day. And all the links in the description box and comment section. And they are trusted, vetted links. Make sure you know what you hold and know what you click on. I'll catch all of you on the next one.